Simple harmonic motion is something that's seen by students as not so simple. That's why I have that dumb joke there from uh, Austin Powers, right? Simple harmonic motion, so simple. Um, it's a kind of motion that is a little bit difficult to describe for many people. Uh, first of all, people think that it's just something that repeats. But there you're confusing uh, periodic with simple harmonic motion. Something that's periodic is something that sort of the motion repeats. That's true, like a clock face or something like that, or like your heart beating. But it doesn't necessarily make it simple harmonic motion. So we're going to use this short form SHM for simple harmonic motion. And we have a definition for it. And we say this, uh, this is actually a, a really important definition. I'm going to put it in green. Uh, we're going to say this, if, now watch carefully what this here means here. This right here. This means the acceleration, remember what this alpha symbol means? It means proportional to, and it's going to be negative x. This is going to be what we need here. Now, what does this mean? It means that the acceleration is equal to some number times x. Right, that's what the proportional means, and it happens to have a negative there. Uh, let's first define some a few things here. Uh, make sure we remember what acceleration is uh, measured in. Do you remember the units for acceleration? Hopefully you're screaming at the screen right now. It's meters per second squared. Displacement from equilibrium is in meters. So let's maybe, uh, as an example, maybe I'll just talk about uh, something like, um, uh, one example could be a pendulum. So imagine that you have a pendulum. So can you imagine this pen right here? There's my pendulum. Get it? It's a pen. Oh, I'm really proud of myself for that one. That wasn't planned at all. But imagine that I take my pendulum and I have it uh, going back and forth like this. This right here, obviously, if I do it right now, it's not going to work. because There's a lot of friction from my hand. But imagine it's going back and forth. Okay. As the pendulum swings back and forth, it's going to undergo simple harmonic motion. So there's a few things that are going to be really important. Okay, first of all, uh, maybe we can even write it down here. Well, let's say here um, the acceleration. Uh, I'll put it maybe in blue. So I'll put this right here around. This is sort of the words version of what this right here means. There's two pieces to this, right? A is proportional to x, and also A is you know negative. So what this is going to mean? Um, maybe this will uh, first of all be nice to show you a graph, and then I'll explain it more in context here. So what I'll do is I'll show you with a graph here um, how this graph goes. This is an equation. If it's proportional to, do you see you can put some number in front of it? So we're going to say a equals some constant. I'm going to put a negative in front of it. It's going to be some constant times x. It's going to have some number there. Now, keep in mind that square doesn't make it a quadratic. This is just a number square. So what does this mean? This looks like a linear graph, doesn't it? Uh, that means it's a straight line graph. It goes through the origin because there's no plus or minus anything here. And it's got a negative slope. So what that means is it's going to be a graph that goes something like, let me see if I can draw it. Oh, I hope I can. There we go, there. That looks great. So this would be an example of uh, this equation here, that acceleration is proportional to negative x. That means it's a linear graph, but it doesn't go up, it actually goes down, because it's got the negative in front of it. Now what in the world does that mean? I think it's really important to understand, um, first of all, this graph that I just showed you, that is the most common thing you're asked about. It's often a definition about being proportional to displacement or acting in opposite direction, or it's gonna be literally just, which is the graph for SHM? You're like, oh, that one. If you remember the definition, that tells you the graph, or vice versa, the graph tells you the definition. So to think a little bit more about it, let's look at this. Um, let's imagine then that I've got my pendulum. Let's talk about this a little bit more. So remember an acceleration is related to a force, isn't it? Because of Newton's second law. So if you have a force, you have an acceleration. So watch this carefully. As I pull this right here back, think about this now. Right now, as I pull it back, I've displaced it that way, right? There's a displacement going this way. Which way is the uh, force going? The force is gonna act that way, isn't it? Because gravity is sort of acting that way. So even though I've displaced it that way, force is acting opposite in direction, see that? And the more I displace it, the more force there will be. That explains, hopefully, on this graph, for example, why when you have a positive x you know, um, displacement, you have a larger acceleration. Remember, acceleration is related to force, right? The more force you have, the more acceleration. Conversely, if you go in the negative direction, so let's just say you go the opposite direction, yeah, that means in this case I'm going negative x, then uh, my acceleration is in that way. It's always acting opposite to the motion. Uh, so I think that is one good way to sort of think about this. So that's SHM.
Uh, what I'm going to show you then is another basic definition, really important. I like this SMH. Isn't that supposed to be shaking my head, right? But it's like SMH, isn't that simple harmonic motion? No. Uh, let's do a simple example here. Uh, a mass on a spring that moves back and forth. I figured it would be good to not just do pendulums. So imagine then you have this mass. So you have that some, something, it's sitting on a frictionless surface, we'll assume, and it's got springs on both sides. And what you do with it, you take it, you stretch it, and you let it go. Can you think of what motion it'll do? It'll hopefully, if you think it right, it'll go like this, right? It'll go back and forth and back and forth. So it's going to have something called equilibrium. And we're going to call that X. Remember we said X was the displacement from equilibrium. So in this case here, we're going to state then that uh, X equals zero at this point. Over here at maximum displacement, you know, as far as it goes, keep in mind it's symmetric. So it also does the same on the other side. Let's say we can say here X equals max. Now let's think about the potential energy here for both cases in a spring or some sort of situation like this can you think about this is there any potential energy you think when it's sitting right at its equilibrium i mean potential kind of means like stored energy in this case it doesn't have any stored energy when it's right in the middle it's happy perfectly happy so we could say it's zero whereas the uh, potential energy in this case right here where it's at maximum displacement is also at maximum it's because we have an equation for this right for the energy of a spring um, now we can also talk about the velocity uh, at both of these cases, because it is a dynamic situation. I've drawn a stupid drawing here, but it actually is something that's moving. So if you imagine it moving, think about this right at this point, right at equilibrium, right in the middle, as it's passing by and going, going back and forth. Uh, what is its speed right as it's passing that middle point? Is it a maximum or at zero as it's going like this, back and forth? Hope you can see it's at a maximum value. So we're gonna say V is max here. And if V is max, do you know we can also do EK, kinetic energy, which is half MV squared. So if V is at a maximum, then the kinetic energy is at a maximum. Conversely, let's look at this at its, at its maximum displacement over here. It stops, doesn't it? So right there when it stops, that means V is zero. And if V is zero, since EK, the kinetic energy is half MV squared, and that's also zero. So this is all you really need. This idea, this understanding right here, this is how I can generate each of these two graphs here. And I'm going to show you those graphs. You need to know those as well. So let's talk about these graphs here. Um, let's do a graph for energy versus displacement. Okay, so we'll consider the energy on the y-axis, displacement on the x-axis. That means that it's going to be limited. It's going to be bound in displacement. Won't it? it doesn't go forever because this displacement actually goes to a certain value and then a certain value. We normally call that displacement, the maximum displacement, uh, usually x0 we call it, the maximum displacement here. We call that x0. Um, which is weird because you'd think that that's not when x equals 0. That's which is what we call maximum displacement, or the amplitude. In this case right here, as this thing goes along, let's think carefully about the energies. Let's deal with potential energy first, maybe. At x equals 0, so at 0x right here, um, it's got a potential energy of 0, so I'm going to draw a dot there. Okay, good. At maximum displacement has a maximum potential energy. So in this case, that means that one maximum, I don't know, I'll pick maybe right here. Let's just say I'll pick that right there and that right there. The point will actually go maybe up here to some maximum. And because it's symmetric, it also does that. It has a nice smooth curve, so it'll be something like this. And I'll label it E, P. Now for the kinetic, it goes very similarly, only opposite. Let's look at this, the kinetic, um, that one, is at a maximum at zero. So at x equals zero, it's at a maximum kinetic energy because it's moving as fast as it can. And at maximum displacement, kinetic energy is zero. So you can go here and here, right? Because it's symmetric. And again, it's a nice smooth curve. So it goes like this. So that's, oh, I drew that poorly. I'll try to do it again here a little bit better. There, that's better, EK. There we go, we have kinetic and potential. And do you remember how we have an equation for a total energy? Remember the total energy is just the kinetic plus the potential? So if you think about that, that means that if you add up like 0 plus 1, whatever this unit is, that you have a point here. And if you add 0 plus 1, you get this. And 0 plus 1, you get this. And even half and half. So you end up with, if you do it right, you get to do it with a straight line going across, total energy. And can you see the total energy is conserved? It's the same? Thank goodness that's how it's supposed to work. So this thing is actually bound. What if we did this same kind of graph, but this time with time? That means now we sort of let it go and see what happens. Now it does depend on how you decide your time is zero. In other words, do you decide that, do you decide that the kinetic is zero at t equals zero or do you decide that the uh, potential is zero? It depends on when you start your timer. 
Imagine as it's going back and forth. Do you start your timer right at when it's at a maximum? You know, click and then you go like this. Or do you start it when it's at its equilibrium? Let's assume we did it at the maximum. Okay, let's assume uh, at t equals zero, you're at maximum displacement. So let's see what happens then with the uh, different values here. So let's do potential. At t equals zero, you're at maximum displacement, which is up here. So what's your potential? Your potential is maximum, some maximum value. Of course, at some time, it's going to be down to zero, right? And then it's going to go back up again. So over time, it's actually going to do some sort of you know, curve like this. I'm drawing it poorly there, but it'll be something like this. It'll oscillate like this. This will be the um, graph for potential. The kinetic will do the opposite. And hopefully that makes sense because if uh, this at maximum displacement, the kinetic energy will be zero. So that means that T equals zero, it's zero here. And of course it goes up and down and up and down. So it does the opposite. So it goes basically like this, like this, like this, like this, and continues forever. Well, until it stops moving, I guess. That's EK. And good news, and remember this one does go forever. Like both of these graphs actually do go as far as you need them to go. Uh, and we can do the same thing with total energy. Total energy is this nice straight line that goes right across the top, ET.